Hey guys, just recently AMD took the crown of the best gaming CPU with the 7950X3D, but that was at the series premium. Also, it's not exactly a gaming focused chip, rather something that you can do gaming, streaming, and a bunch of other things due to its core count. Well, now we have the 8 core 7800X3D chip, which is both much cheaper and actually much better for gaming. Let's get into it. Also, rather than covering the details about these X3D chips, we'll flip the script and go into the results first. And if you're interested, I will share my opinion and an unexpected setup for those who want to save some money at the end of the video. Feel free to use chapters to jump around. For our test bench, we'll be using X670E motherboard, 6000 mega transfer RAM, and RTX 4090 FE to ensure we're not bottlenecked, which with this CPU is actually very possible, even with the 4090. We will compare these chips to the recently reviewed Ryzen 9 7950X3D. Let's begin with gaming and the classic favorite, Shadow of a Tomb Raider at 1080p resolution. It is important to note that we've opted for the lower graphical settings to achieve higher frame rates, which still leads for the GPU to get really close to the max load and risk of becoming the bottleneck. In this test, 7800X3D shows a slight improvement in average FPS compared to the Ryzen 9 with identical 1 percentiles, but considerably better performance per watt. We observe between 39 and 43% improvement in this aspect. When compared to the older 7950X, the 7800X3D offers a 30% higher frame rate while being almost three times more power efficient. Moving on to 1440p, we see a similar trend with around 6% performance improvement in average FPS at stock settings and 45% enhancement in efficiency. At 4K resolution, the results remain fairly consistent. There is a 4% improvement in 1 percentiles and 45% increase in power efficiency. Moving on to the next game, Horizon Zero Dawn, which places heavier demand on the GPU. With this, we notice lower frame rates. Despite that, at 1080p, the new CPU still outperforms 7950X3D by 10% in average FPS and around 4% in 1 percentiles. Additionally, there's still an impressive 44% improvement in FPS per watt. At 1440p, the performance continues to be approximately 10% faster in average FPS with virtually the same 1 percentile results. When it comes to 4K, all of the examples display nearly identical frame rates, mainly due to the previously mentioned GPU bottleneck. While this result may not be the most useful for CPU testing, as other variables aside from the CPU can influence the outcome, it is crucial to highlight that even with this GPU bottleneck, the 7800X3D chip still shows significantly higher power efficiency. At stock settings, we see roughly 34% improvement, and with PVO enabled, it increases to about 37%. The next game we tested is World War Z Aftermath which is quite the opposite of Horizon Zero Dawn in terms of performance requirements. It is significantly easier to run, and as a result, any differences in performance become more pronounced. At 1080p, we observed nearly 30% higher average FPS and 1 percentiles, along with a remarkable 65% improvement in power efficiency. The FPS per 100 watt graph for this game appears to be almost absurd, but it is what it is. At 1440p resolution, we see similar trend, a 26% improvement over the 7950X3D in average FPS and 31% in 1 percentile performance, while maintaining 64% higher FPS per watt. Lastly, at 4K, we noted a 17% increase in average FPS and 26% improvement in 1 percentiles, with 50% better power efficiency. While we could continue with more examples, the main point of interest is the performance delta. AMD's briefing mentioned that the performance should be quite similar and in some cases worse. However, that's not what we're observing here, which raises a question, what happened? There are a few possibilities to consider. One explanation could be Silicon Lottery, where 7950X3D chip we tested may not have been reaching the full potential, while 7800X3D simply excels. Another potential issue could be the chipset driver, and more importantly the scheduling tool we had to use on a dual CCD design, which may have caused performance loss. By the way, if you haven't seen our previous 7950X3D video, the link is in the description below. We'll try to dig deeper, and if there is anything noteworthy, we'll make a video about it. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss it. With that being said, let's move on to some productivity benchmarks, as well as deeper investigation into power and thermals, starting with V-Ray. In this test, with half the cores, the 7800X3D has half the performance of the 7950X3D. Enabling PBL provides a small boost, but it's just like in gaming, not really substantial. One area where high core count is not as crucial is video editing, as clearly demonstrated within our DaVinci benchmark by Pugin Bench. While 7950X3D is faster here, the difference is about 10%, which is not a deal breaker. 
If you're working with limited budget, it's recommended to invest more in your graphics card, as it can handle many workloads allowing your CPU to keep performing well. On the other hand, if you are someone who deals with more CPU intensive workloads requiring many cores, this chip may not be the best choice. Take for instance, the difference in CPU blender render times. The higher end chip with more cores completes the render in nearly half the time. This leads us well to the next point. During these tests, we've also tracked thermals and power consumption. Like the rest of the 7000 series chips, AMD designed them to push hard, resulting in high temperatures. We managed to cool this chip to about 77 degrees Celsius with 360 ml liquid AO while running at 100% speed. This is with 28 degree ambient temperature. With VBO and Curve Optimizer enabled, the chip maintained 4.9 GHz speed throughout the whole test, which is quite impressive. Without Curve Optimizer, it reached 4.75 GHz, suggesting it was power limited. Power consumption analysis supports this theory, as 7800X3D consistently hovers around 80 watt mark with all three configurations. Throughout our testing, it never exceeded 84 watts, and in gaming it only reached 70 watts at most during 1440p test in Shadow of a Tomb Raider. And this is for a good reason. The unique architecture of the AMD Ryzen 7800X3D chips built upon the previous generation by expanding the level 3 cache through the addition of memory direct atop of the die, earning it the 3D designation. This technique was previously implemented in the 8 core 5800X3D chip with a single CCD. However, due to the power limitations, these chips operate at reduced voltage, resulting in lower frequencies compared to their non 3D counterparts and manual overclocking is not available. AMD employs the same methodology in this later generation, incorporating Ryzen 7000's IPC improvements and an additional curve optimizer for voltage target tweaking. With the some silicon luck, you might be able to squeeze slightly more performance from these chips. I'll give you the best feature of this CPU is the lack of overclocking, which may seem counterintuitive, but this CPU performs really well out of the box. It doesn't require a motherboard with numerous VRM phases or robust power delivery allowing for budget-friendly PC builds with low-end A620 motherboards. Some boards are priced as low as 100 USD, which when paired with the CPU creates a powerful system without unnecessary extras. However, be careful when choosing A620 motherboards. Some of the low-end options only support 65 watt chips. Opt for the ones that support 120 to be safe. In conclusion, the new 7800X3D is an impressively fast and efficient chip, which will likely impact both Intel sales and those of the higher end AMD processors, hence the delayed release strategy. Until now, opting for a 7000 series chip came with a premium due to the absence of affordable motherboards and high cost of DDR5 memory. The performance increase didn't quite justify the expenditure. However, this situation is changing. With the introduction of the 7800X3D and mid-range A620 motherboards, the market is poised for a shakeup, offering gamers fantastic value for their money. Would love to hear your thoughts on this launch and whether you'll be considering picking up one of these chips. Let us know in the comments below. Check out the links in the description box for more information on any of the items covered in the video. We hope you found this review helpful. If you did, don't forget to hit that thumbs up button and subscribe for more content like this. We'll see you guys in the next one.